What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are at GearFest 2023 in the gear exchange room. And I've got the homie Hunter, AKA Aggiefish here. We're gonna check out an amp, because that's what we do on this channel. So today we've got the Witch Doctor dual lead from Voodoo Amplification. Let's do it. All right, that's as good as that's gonna get. All right, hope you guys are doing great out there today. As I said, we are here, Sweetwater Gear Fest 2023. I've got an amp nerd, if there ever was one, sitting here on the casting couch with me. <laughs> we got Hunter, AKA Agafish. How you doing, man? What am I doing here, man? I don't know. All right. You can probably leave, actually. Yeah, I think so. This is like your territory. No, you can uh... stay. He's gonna help me riff. We're gonna try to make this amp sound good. So. Today, we are checking out here at the Gear Exchange. This is available for sale, by the way. So if you want to purchase this thing, if I don't go home with it, we've got a Voodoo Amps Witch Doctor Dual Lead. I've never heard of this amp before. Uh, I didn't know of its existence until I walked in this room and I said, I have to try that. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's a built off of some sort of Marshall platform. So anyways, I don't know anything about this amp. I know Voodoo generally builds amps off of Marshall platforms but I've never seen a Marshall with a control layout like this, so I imagine he's gutted it pretty heavily and done his own thing inside of it. We've got a, uh, a master, what's like a global control here with bottom mid slice presence. We have a global dial. Then you have pretty much all of your standard Marshall EQ here in the front, which is probably gonna get you next to nothing uh, when you're dialing the controls. We've got a gain, a master, and it looks like a solo master boost function, which I will obviously never use. Yeah, that looks like pretty much it as far as the features go, but I kind of just wanted to rip through this thing because anytime I find a, a modern Marshall style amp, uh, I think that fits the channel pretty well. So I've got an Ibanez Tube Screamer. That's what we were using for that initial clip. And then I've got an EC1000 here with, I believe, the Seymour Duncan Pegasus Sentient pickup in it because it's purple and I liked it. So that's why we're using it. Also got a Rev Tilt Overdrive. What are you playing, man? Uh, this is a Zemitis something or another. That's all I got for you. <laughs> right. I genuinely don't know what that's it is. That's good enough for me because that's all the more interested I am in that guitar. Yeah, it's got like a tunematic ish and uh, How heavy is that? Because it looks it's heavy. It's actually not. It's not? It's not at all. Okay. Yeah. It's probably chambered. Might as well throw oh, it in yeah, the trash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they sucked all the tone out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen to it later. The tone was gone. Yeah. All right, so I played through it already. From my first assessment, we're also going through some sort of weird, like old guy Fender speakers here, so I have no idea what to base anything off of. But to my ears, like the amp sounds kind of just like an 80s thrash thing. Like that's kind of the kind yeah. of the vibe that I'm getting from it. At least, you know, what I could do with it. Yeah, um, so we kind of cheated earlier and you went through the EQ section. Played with the knobs and, a little bit. And uh, it did absolutely nothing. Pretty much. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's the sounds. And it's it's kind of <laughs> that, chunky. That's what yeah. you get. Yeah, it's definitely like very thick, very low mid heavy. But uh, I'm going to actually have you play. We'll hand this off to you. All right. And uh, I'll play around with the controls a little bit. I'm most interested in this global section here because that seems like that's where most of our tone shaping is going to come from. All right, man. Do you want overdrive on or off? Uh, as much gain as I can get away with. I'll start you without it and then I'll click it on, you know, okay. if All I right, feel so like you're struggling. Why did I even uh, answer the question? I, because just I just wanted to tell you what to do. <laughs> so, All right, so go ahead.
Is that belligerent enough for you, Kyle? Oh, dude, you got a better right hand than All I right, do. Thank oh, you. Doesn't take much. <laughs> Yep. All right, so that was without an overdrive. So uh, for those watching at home, going through the EQ controls, it seemed like most of them, the treble was was pretty responsive. Everything else like didn't do anything unless they were at like the extremes of the dial. So like the bass yeah. did nothing unless it was like all the way off or like almost above, above three o'clock here. The mid control didn't do a whole lot of anything unless it was dimed, and then it kind of gave us like this, uh, we'll call it a plappy midsection. Yeah, that's the right word. Yeah, it's just very bulbous and gross. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. One of the things that I like about Marshall amps is the cutting like upper midsection, and it, this doesn't really seem to have that. Granted, the speakers that were on, who knows? You yeah, know. Glenn will tell you that's the problem. Yeah. Like, the amp doesn't even matter. We could play through any of these and the speakers. Play through this. Yeah. <laughs> that would probably be more interesting. <laughs> but overall, like even the global thing, like I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference. Did you notice while you were playing? I only really noticed when you got to the transistor radio. Like that's yeah. really the That was only, the only time yeah. where it turned your head. Yeah. Right. So like this says mid slice, like I'm gonna call a lie on that because there were no slicing mids going on. <laughs> Again, they were just like real round. Um, presence didn't really seem to do much unless you had it pretty much dimed out and then neither did the bottom. This all could be user error though. So like if you guys have experience with this amp, which I doubt many people do, but if you do, make sure to leave it down below in the comments because I would love to know everything that I'm getting wrong about this video right now. But otherwise, I don't hate the tone. Like I don't, it's not my favorite, but it also just kind of sounds like a modded Marshall, like a gained out modded Marshall that was built in the 80s or with the 80s in mind. What do you think? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not terribly picky as long as it's okay. got gain and it sounds like this has gain. <laughs> this and, has some gain. And I mean, especially the speaker cabinet that we're going through, I have no idea what those are. Right. They're not vintage 30s and it still sounds like pretty chunky. Yeah, so, like, yeah. I'm, I'm with it. I will agree with that. So uh, with that being said, let's kick you on Let's kick you on a tube screamer and riff around a little bit, and I'll just try to get the tone like I think sounds good, which okay. might not mean anything. With the global control off, like that kind of takes away that kind of like bulbous mid thing going on. Like it kind of, yeah. it, it's not as mid forward as I would like it to be, but the mids are kind of like balanced to a usable point where they don't sound like super nasally. Um, so that was with the Tube Screamer. Let's try the Rev Till uh, drive section. Play around with that a little Is bit. Is this the, the Sean Tubbs one? Yes. The
I'm actually really impressed with the speaker cabinet. I have no <laughs> idea. Like, yeah, like, I'm just like, it looks like it's it's something like, I don't know, your great grandfather would play yes. through. Yeah. And yet, like, you know. It's ripping. Yeah. It's totally ripping. Is this thing closed back? Yeah, it's, it's at least closed back, so we can give it that. Did you guys say this was a 210? It is 210. It's a Fender Tremolux. Tremolux. Okay, so for everybody at, no, at home that actually knows about gear that's not uh, high gain belligerent stuff, uh, Fender Tremolux cab. I know absolutely nothing about this, but I mean, it sounds okay. I hope it sounds as good through the mic as it does like in the room. Otherwise, yeah. I'm just gonna sound like an absolute like I've just delete my channel. Right. Now. Like yeah, you might as well just give it up. People <laughs> yeah. at home are bleeding from the ears. <laughs> like unsubscribe. Like pressing it over and over again. Yeah. But I don't know, man. In the room, it sounds okay. This is definitely an amp that I would like to like have in my own environment to really check out. But I will say, regardless of speaker cabinet, most of the EQ is doing nothing to shape the tone or the feel of the amp. Yeah. Like it's just, it's not super responsive. So it's like, if you like the tone that the amp is giving you, great. If you don't like it, you're kind of SOL. Yeah. Uh, unless you've changed the speakers around pretty significantly, but yeah. Uh, so that's an amp. Let me, I'll riff through it one more time and we'll- <laughs> That's an amp. <laughs> we'll call this a day, yeah. <laughs> this thing makes loud noises, so. All right, so we'll do one riff the way we have it dialed in, and then we'll call it a day. What do you think? I think, I, I agree with you. It's one that I want to take home yeah. and like actually go through recorded because, okay, I should like clarify what I meant before where it's like it does gain and so that's good enough for me, right? In a live setting, in a room, that's good enough for me. Yeah. When it comes to like recorded tones, I'm a lot more particular. Right. So this might annoy me that it only gets like one, one sound. sound. Right. It sounds like a good sound here. But I mean, it's like when you go to a live show, right? It's right. just like, it's loud and it's gainy. And so it's perfect. Yeah. But I don't know, man, it's an amp. You like amps. I do like amps, but so. in the context of things, like just to like uh, have an opposing view, this $1,900 on the used market, this DSL 100H probably is listed at like what? 600 bucks, 700 bucks. That's a great amp. This is a great amp. I used to own one. Yeah. I love and you. like, I would take this in a heartbeat over this. Sorry, Trace of Voodoo if you see this video. But I mean, this just like, things are more responsive. Do you actually know the guy? Yes, I've talked to him before. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, it's great. It's great. Right. <laughs> so honest opinion, yeah. But anyways, yeah, cool. Uh, there's an there's an amp that we can check off our list that we didn't even know existed until yeah, this no, moment. Yeah, thank you for introducing me to an amp that does exists. one thing. Yeah, yeah, that cool. that is here on yeah. Earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> all right, cool. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. If you guys know about this amp at all, if you have any experience with it, or just what you thought about the tones, make sure to leave them down below in the comments, and I'll meet you down there to chat about it. Make sure to go over to Hunter's channel, subscribe to him because he does all sorts of awesome things as well. And uh, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. See ya. Uh, a fun fact about the sand, I was looking up some stuff on while we were playing. Yeah. Uh, it was originally designed for Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses. Oh, Rose. sorry, oh, Richard. Really? <laughs> that dude has, like, an insane amp collection, too. Yeah. Of, like, some of the most... The, he's got Mick Mars's Plexi, doesn't he? He huh. does, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... So he's like, that's the tone I want. And <laughs> I had a great time with this little fucking... <laughs> so, the snark air yeah. has a fan. Yeah. <laughs> this is legitimately like 80% of our footage, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just you know. I get paid to do this. <laughs> I don't know why yet. Yeah, neither. <laughs> Strike while the iron's hot. Strike while the iron's hot.